Welcome back. Hopefully you've just finished watching Lesson 0, How Big is an Empty Sketch Anyway, where you will have discovered that even without much programming, so uh, you know, no functionality, no nothing, just an absolute bare minimum sketch, your program will already be consuming over 466 bytes. Well, actually, exactly 466 bytes. Now, the next lesson is um, one of the common areas that I see a lot of people asking for on the various forums. Uh, and that is, how do I read from the serial port and how do I do something with it? So how can I react to user commands that are sent in through the serial port? So what this lesson is going to do is show you a little bit more advanced than the basics, but it should still be fairly easy to follow on. Um, I'm not going to be typing the sketch in as I go because uh, that would just, you know, you'd spend a lot of time just watching me typing and that's a waste of your time and my time. So I've got this sketch already prepared and I'm going to post the actual code directly on the website as well so that you can just download it, analyze it, do it, whatever you like with it, change it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the first thing, like I mentioned in lesson zero, always have a comment block at the top of your sketches so that you know what it does and you have any references to other things that might be useful. All right. The second thing that I always do and I recommend people do is where you have um, things you need to declare like constants that are um, defining a buffer size uh, or uh, some kind of statement about something. So like here I've got one define debug one. All right. I put defines in rather than um, something like this, which I see a lot of where they say int debug um, equals true uh, one, right, or something like that. When you do that kind of thing, what happens is you've just chewed up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, at least probably fifteen or sixteen bytes of your memory just to declare the fact that you've got this debug statement. And wherever you start using it, it's going to be using more memory as well. But the initial declaration, you just wasted all that space. With a declare, uh, sorry, a define statement, which you'll see right here, define debuggers one, that takes up no space whatsoever. And, and I showed that in lesson zero where I had the defines in and even when I deleted everything, there was absolutely no change to the space that was consumed. So use defines instead of ints and constants and stuff like that where you can. OK, um, the next thing is I've actually defining now some real variables. Now, that when I when I say real variable, what I mean is a variable that will change over the execution lifetime of the program. So what I have here, we're going to be reading from the serial port. And because I want to deal with more than one character at a time, um, you need to put that data somewhere. All right, and we typically would call that an input buffer or a serial buffer or something like that. Usually it has the word buffer in there. Now, in order for anything to come in through the serial port, if you run the IDE and you click this little serial monitor up on the top right hand corner, it will bring out a console and I'll show you this in a little while. And what that does is you can type in the top something from your keyboard but nothing gets sent to the Arduino until you press the enter key. Now, what happens there is that sends at least two characters. It sends the character that you typed, and it will send the enter character, which is typically referred to as the uh, slash n when you see it written as text in a program. Now, if you don't type anything and all you do is hit the enter, it'll still send the slash n. Anyway, what I've got here is I'm declaring an input buffer. And in I see a lot of people where in here, they would just put something like that. Well, that's OK, but it's not really very friendly and uh, very useful in the longer term when you're trying to program, because you're trying to remember what the value is. A much better approach is actually to use one of the defined variables or um, some other reference so that all of your variables are defined way up the top. And in this case, I've defined a serial buffer size of 50. So now I can just in here say character input buffer serial buffer size. And that will actually create me a buffer of 50 characters. The int serial index equals zero is a pointer that I'm going to be using a little later to keep, sorry, not a pointer, but a counter 
that will keep track of how many characters I've received and make sure I don't exceed the serial buffer size. Um, so you'll see as I go through the program how useful this is. Now the first thing from also from lesson zero now is I've uncommented the serial begin. This is always required in the setup function in order to be able to initialize the serial port so that you can send and receive from your computer console or a terminal or something like that that might that will be plugged into the USB. Uh, one of the common mistakes I've seen some people trying to do with some advanced programming is they try to talk to the USB with their PC and what they really should be doing is talking to the um, COM ports. So typically these will show up as COM1 or COM5 or 6 or something like that. And in my case right now, it looks like I'm showing up as COM6. So that's the initialization in the setup routine. All right, I haven't got anything else in here right now because that's all I need for this lesson. The next thing I've got is the main loop. Remember I mentioned that this get called repeatedly by the underlying bootloader effectively is a while loop. So you don't need to do your own while. And if you look in here, aside from some comments that are saying what I'm doing, the only thing I have here is a statement that says, if check serial, do command input buffer. Well, we already have mentioned what the input buffer is. It's up here. It's stuff that came from the console. So even without reading anything else on this on uh, this sketch, you can probably have a good guess at what this is doing. It's checking the serial port, and if you find something, because it's if check serial, do command. So it's saying if I find something on the serial port, do some kind of command and pass it the string that came in the serial port. So you haven't read anything else, but you already know what it's going to do. That's pretty cool. You also notice that that's all there is in the main loop. It is very straightforward and very simple. What I like to do is I like to make separate functions that perform the different pieces of the code rather than having one massive great big loop that is very difficult to debug and very difficult to even just simply read through and keep track of. It's very easy to make mistakes when you have massive functions. So keep them small, keep them lean, and keep them specific to what you're trying to do with them. All right. Now, this next function that I have here. All right, I've just declared it with a boolean and it just says do command and I pass it in a character pointer the com and I call that a command buffer. Um, if you notice on the call here it's passing in the input buffer. Now it doesn't actually pass in the full buffer of 50 characters, it just passes in the address of the buffer. All right? And then this will use that address so you're not moving lots and lots of data around. Um, even though I don't use it at the moment, it returns a boolean if there is um, when the function exits. That could be true or it could be false. Right now, it just simply returns true. Now, I'm not going to do any command processing with this at the moment. All I'm doing is a print of the command that came in. So if I typed hello on the console and pressed enter, it should just respond right back to the console with a hello back again. Um, the next bit you'll see here, which is something I alluded to in the lesson zero, is a compiler-specific instruction. All right? At the top of the code here, I defined a variable called debug. Now, it's only a definition. It's not been used yet, so it takes up no space. And I've said that it is has a value of 1, which effectively means true. So down here where I've said if debug, because debug is defined and it's set to one, it's basically saying if true, which it is, then include this piece of code in my sketch. And then I have end if. If debug was zero, and I will demonstrate this, um, it will not include this in the sketch. So the actual sketch size will shrink. All right, it's a very handy feature to have. I don't see a lot of people doing it. Like I said earlier, they end up just commenting out sections when they're done. If they use something like this, they can leave it all the time and just change one variable at the top and turn those things on and off. So that's the do command. Very simply, right now, it just returns the variable that I sent in from the serial port back out the serial port to be shown back on the console. In later lessons, I will add to this and allow it to actually do proper processing and take actions on different commands that may come in. And we'll do things like controlling some LEDs, maybe an analog to digital converter, and a few things like that. So the next thing we had here up the top in the loop was check serial function. All right, neither of these two take any variables right now. 
So Czech Serial, it's a little more involved. And if you go to the Arduino uh, website or even just Google simply uh, reading from the serial port, you'll see variations. What I've done here is I've just written my own. I've leaned it down as much as I can, and I'm just going to describe what it's doing for you here. So you call check serial, it returns a Boolean. So that, again, is either true or false. The idea here is that if you have a line of text, not a single character, although it could be a single character, then it will return true. And what this will tell the calling program is, is that the input buffer now contains some valid line of input from the user. The line found is an internal variable. So once this function exits, it will disappear. So it's not going to consume memory for very long. It's just a Boolean, but it still takes a byte of data because it's not um, using bit manipulation in this C compiler. Um, so I initialize it and I set it to false. This means that I haven't found a line yet because this is the first time we're coming in here. And you'll see in a moment how we define whether we find a line. And if you remember from the previous code, you should should be able to have a good guess at the answer already. So the first thing is while the serial dot available is greater than zero. So serial dot available, that's simply calling the serial library and saying, is there any characters on the input buffer for the serial? This is built into the serial library. And if there is, it'll return an integer telling it how many characters are available. Now we we don't care how many there are right now. We're just going to say if they're greater than zero, which means there's something there, then go into the while loop. So now we know we have some characters. We're going to read a character into a character buffer. This is not the same as the input buffer. This is just a single character. And the serial.read will read that character into the buffer. Now we need to check that character. Is it the end of the line? So did the user press the enter key? Or have I come across the enter key in the stream of characters coming in from the console? So if character buffer equals equals slash n. Now slash n is the syntax for a character to basically reflect, it reflects the enter key being pressed. And, and when you put it in a string, you use the slash n like this to be able to define that. So it's saying, is it an enter key? And if it isn't, it will go down to the else statement. If it is an enter key, what I do here is I input buffer equals zero. So the serial index, wherever the index is now pointing to, and if you remember at the very top, it started out as zero. I add a zero to it. Now, the reason for this is because any strings within C programming that you're using need to be terminated with a zero so that when you try to print them or scan them or check whether they contain something, the runtime knows when to stop processing the string. If you just left the slash n, whilst that indicates the end of a line, it is not the end of a string. All right. So you, I see a lot of people sometimes have a if it's equal to slash n, and then later on they do a print my input buffer, and it starts printing a whole bunch of garbage all over the screen. The reason for that is because it hasn't found a zero, so it keeps on going past the n, and will even start printing out program space because until it finds a zero, and in which case when it finds that, it'll finally stop. Um, so anyway, back to the code here. Input buffer equals zero. That terminates the string that was coming in. Line found equals, now what this is doing is it's a shortcut for saying if serial index is greater than zero, line found equals true, else line found equals l false. What this does is by putting the brackets around here, I'm doing a Boolean evaluation, which is going to equate to a true or a false. And I'm setting line found to that. So what this little section is doing is saying, if I've got an enter key and I have more than one character in my buffer already, then state that I found a line. Otherwise, don't. Now, the reason for this is so that if you just press the enter key and you don't put any other characters, it's just going to ignore that because you haven't sent a command. Now, if you wanted to have just an enter key, then you would just take this statement out. The other part of defining the end of the line is simply setting the serial index equals zero so that the next time you start receiving something in on the serial buffer and you call this, it will start from zero again and start adding a new buffer. Um, but again, this is only happening if you see the enter key being pressed. So if you don't see an enter key being pressed, you end up in the else if section of the code. And what we do here is 
if the serial index is less than the buffer size. So if at the top we said the buffer is 50 characters, all right, and we declared the buffer right here as 50 characters. Now you see why having it as a um, a name is a little easier. If I had this as 50 as well and I wanted to change it, I would have to go all over my program trying to find everywhere that I put in 50. But because I've used a name instead, it's like an alias for the value, then I can type this. And if I change the buffer to be, say, 20 bytes or 100 bytes, I go to the top of my code, I change it once, and that's it. I never have to change it again. So what this is doing is if I've got, if I haven't filled the buffer and I haven't found the whole line yet, so the line found equals false. Remember up here we were setting it to true if we had more than one character and we had an anti-key pressed. So it's currently false if we're in here. Then the input buffer equals the character that we just read. This little piece in here is the index. So we're indexing into the buffer and the plus plus is incrementing the index pointer. So it'll go one, two, three, four as we keep receiving characters automatically. We don't have to say serial index um, equals serial index plus one or anything like that separate. We just do it in line, keeps it simpler and easier to read. Um, and then that's the end of the processing of the serial input. And the last thing we do is we return the Boolean that tells the calling program whether we found a line of text on the serial port or not. All right. So all you have to do is keep saying if check serial, then process the command. And if check serial returns false, it won't call the process command and you know there's nothing there, but you're not having waits like wait five seconds or any delays or anything like that. Nowhere in here I have delays. Then things only happen if there is an event occurred where something has showed up in a buffer or something like that to make it happen. The last piece I have down here is completely wrapped up in an if debug statement. Remember before I said the hash if the hash if is a compiler directive and it's looking at the variable or the declare um, variable called debug and if it's one or not zero then it will include this section of code and if it is a zero it will exclude it because I only call this in a separate debug statement at the top so if I turn the debug off and I didn't have it wrapped around here this will be sitting here consuming memory but never ever being used. Now, I won't go into the into depth about what this does, except to say that it looks at how much of the stack has been used and figures out how much free RAM is left. Remember, you started off with 2K, and it will return it as an integer back to the calling program. So if I go back up to the do command, all right, I always print the command buffer, so no matter what, I will print that. But if I've got debug turned on, I will also print on a separate line the free RAM equals and whatever that integer is as a decimal value so that you can see how much free RAM there is. So that's pretty much it. That short piece of code will read any length up to the buffer size and will right now simply echo it back to the serial port. So I'm going to compile this now and you'll see how big it is and that's there's not a huge amount here but yet it's already up to two and a half K. So that's 2000 characters. All right. Now, the actual file on the hard drive is probably near a 12K, I think. Um, we'll check that a little bit later. Um, but as you can see, we haven't done a huge amount yet, but we're already up to 2.5K, well, 2K of code, because remember, without even anything, we were already using 466. So you can rapidly increase the size of your program without having to do too much. So that's one of the reasons why these lessons will be showing you how to optimize your memory and not go wild and run out of memory, which is very hard to diagnose if it's the static RAM that you're running out of. So we've compiled this. I'm going to up, got an Arduino Uno hooked up to this already, and I'll just run the compiler and upload it now. So it's uploading it. It takes just a few seconds to upload. Okay, done. So 2,578 bytes uploaded out of 32K. I will click the serial monitor now and I'll bring it into view and I'll show you what this is actually doing for us. So here is the serial monitor. So this area is the output that comes from the Arduino sketch itself and this smaller area at the top here allows me to type something. So if I just type a number, anything like one and press enter um, it doesn't come back to me. And 
Well, for those of you being a little more observant than I am, you may have spotted that my code had the serial port set to 9600, but my console is set to 115K2 board rate. So of course I'm not seeing anything on the console. Wouldn't expect to. So I'm just gonna reset this and hopefully it will fix the issue. Let's try this again. And there we go. So <laughs> note to newcomers and old timers alike. Pay attention to your settings. If first things don't seem to be working, check the obvious stuff first. Make sure your serial ports are matched up with your sending and receiving. Um, by the way, just that's an interesting point though. 9600 board is actually quite slow. And um, you know, if you're actually outputting a lot of text to the serial console and back, you would be probably beneficial in up upping that board rate. But do remember that it may have an overhead with interrupts or something like that on the Arduino later on if your code becomes more complex um, and slow things down while the serial port is transmitting and, re and receiving. But um, anyway, just a point to note. So I'm typing A, it's got telling me now they see the free RAM here because the debug is 1, it's saying 1773. So if I just type, you know, hello there, all right, so it's outputting it, and it's not having any effect on the RAM whatsoever because my buffer has already been declared at 50 characters. Um, if I go in and put hello there, which is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 characters, and I repeat that, so control C, 12 characters. So what I'm going to do here is fill the buffer up beyond its normal limit. So 2, so 12, 24, 36, 48. So that's way more than 50 now. Theoretically, what should happen is it should only show you the first 50 characters, or 49 actually, because it will reserve the last one for the um, slash zero. All right. So as you can see there, it didn't print all of them. It finished with the heat of the 50th or 49th character. So this is a way of also protecting your input. Um, if you don't have buffer limits, C will let you input a bit as big a buffer as you like. But because I've only declared 50 characters, the very next piece after that buffer could easily be program space. So you hear about these buffer overrun viruses and attacks and things like that. This is exactly the kind of thing that would happen if you did not protect your input um, in the way that I have by um, having something like this, where if your serial index is less than the buffer size, you're okay to continue, but the minute you hit the buffer size, stop receiving the input. Otherwise, you will corrupt your program or other variables and cause yourself issues. And you may not realize that you have these issues until maybe uh, you know a couple of months after you've deployed something. And you know, some of my friends that are using Arduinos and things have their Arduino running in a different country and they're accessing it over the internet. They cannot reprogram it. So, you know, in, in th situations like that, you have to make sure that your um, buffers are reliable and they're safe. Um, because he, my friend has it controlling his house lighting and heating and even the plant watering system outside of his house in Spain, but he lives in the UK. So, you know, you can imagine if you had a buffer overrun and it crashed, now you have to go, you know, wait till you get out there or you have to go call some one of your neighbors to go reset it for you. And that's not very ideal. So remember, always protect your inputs. All right. Anyway, so that's basically it for um, this lesson. The only thing I want to now do just before I close it off is show you the effect that will happen when I tell it to not be in debug mode. Remember right now I'm in debug mode, but debug is set to one. So this piece of code is included and a little bit of code in here is included. So right now we've got 2578 bytes being used. And as you saw on the console, it will output how much spare RAM, uh, free RAM there is. So what I'm now gonna do is change this to be a zero and I'll recompile it. And remember it was 2578. So when we recompile and upload, we'll get the new value. Right. So it's dropped 500 
bytes. 2578 it was. Now it's 20,040. So just those two things alone, which is this area here, right? Just this. And the print statement here, right? Now that includes this text and everything. That's all part of your program space. That consumed 500 bytes of program space. That's huge when you're starting to run out of program space. So as you can see with this, changing that and having a switch like that when I'm done debugging restores a huge amount. Now if I run this as well, unfortunately it's not going to show me how much RAM is now left because that's one of the things that's been removed. But you'll see that even the command line has been affected because now it doesn't actually respond with um, the free RAM anymore because that's part of the debug clause that I had in the compiler. Okay, that ends lesson one, reading from the serial port and echoing it back. Um, pretty much anybody that is going to be using an Arduino and, and sending it commands through a serial port from a PC or you know from any other computer really, it even can be um, another Arduino or it could be a Raspberry Pi or pretty much anything that has a serial output on it, uh, you will need to receive data and whilst you can have one character, this will work with anything from one character right up to you know hundreds of characters as long as you don't run out of uh, your static RAM. So I've got 50 set for here. If you obviously wanted something smaller, you can just set the, the buffer space to something less. If you wanted more, you can increase it. Um, the next lesson, lesson two, will actually now take you through making some kind of decision with the text that has been sent in from the serial port. Um, the lesson will only show you echoing decisions back to the console at the moment. We will get into driving actual hardware a little bit later on. But if you know how to do um, digital.write, digital.read, and things like that, then it's very easy to modify even lesson two to be able to do whatever you want it to do. But I hope you'll hang in there and go and see the other lessons as well.